Hi guys, uh, my name is Scott and I'm going to be taking us through some of the basics of how to build your own websites for free in a product called Google Sites. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to open up a Google Chrome browser window. So this is um, a way of accessing the internet. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you could also use Firefox or Internet Explorer. I need you to use Chrome for this though. So just make sure that you've got the Chrome browser installed. First thing you're going to do is in the top right corner, if you haven't already, click sign in and it'll ask you to sign in with a Google account. If you've not got a Google account, you'll need to create one in order to um, follow through this uh, tutorial. So just go uh, create a Google account and then come back to this um, screen. And then once you've done that, you should be able to sign straight in uh, with your account. And we should be into Google. Now, if you've got your own Google account, you might see your own name here. You might see a picture if you've set one of them. Um, so let's not worry about that. Now, the first thing I want you to do, you can do, get to Google Sites in a variety of ways. You can type into the bar at the top, sites.google.com. You could also just search. This is probably the easiest way to do it. Search Google Sites, and it should come up straight away in the top there. If you click through to Google Sites, you'll see this page. And if you've never done this before, you'll see Click Plus to create a new site. So that's what we're going to do. You could use some templates that are already set up for you here. You can explore those if you want to, but we're just going to start and create one from scratch. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the big plus, and we get our blank site. Now, the first time you come into Google Sites, you'll see this tour. Um, you can take the tour if you like. I'm going to skip it because I'm going to kind of give you the tour in this video. Let's give our site a name. Um, I'm just going to call this Intro to Google Sites. And if I click off there, you'll see that it's automatically filled in my Intro to Google Sites um, into the top banner there. Now, if we just take a little tour around this um, interface, you can see there's some various um, toolbar icons at the top. We can preview, we can share this with others, um, some settings which we'll go through in a bit. And then there's all of these things that we can add. And a lot of these are fairly self-explanatory. So if we click that, then we're probably going to get a picture and some text. It's just going to come into our layout like that. And we could go ahead and add a picture. We could add some text and so on. Let's get rid of that for a second. You can add some text via text box, images, um, and then any of these things down the right hand side. So you could put YouTube videos straight in here. You could put anything from the rest of Google Drive or G Suite, uh, such as Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, and so on. So this now is kind of already um, a sort of base level website for you to work from. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and create a page, um, which is kind of just going to be um, exactly what it says, an introduction to Google Sites. So let's go ahead and um, call our page an introduction to Google Sites. Seems sensible because that's what we're kind of trying to do. Um, let's go and select an image. Now we can select an image straight from the gallery. You can also use your own by uploading um, or by sort of finding it in Google Drive, but we're just going to use one of these. Let's use a PC because, uh, or a Mac even, because that's kind of uh, sensible for, for what we want to what we want to do. Um, so next thing we're going to do, let's just add in a um, text box which says, um, "Watch this video." to learn more about Google Sites. Um, I can resize that. Let's make it half um, the size. And let's add in a YouTube video directly to this page. So if I'm correct, I should be able to find an Eduin90 clip. Um, let's say Eduin90 Google Sites. And Eduin90 is Google's um, sort of introductory video playlist. So let's just grab that one. Let's select it and put it in there. And I can move that and put it um, over there. So this now gives me my base homepage uh, introduction to Google Sites website. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and tidy this up a little bit and let's just add Bridgen College's logo. Since I am uh, currently working at Bridgen College, we'll add some alt text as well. And like it says just underneath, alt text is accessed by screen readers, people who might have trouble seeing your content. So anybody who's visually impaired, it's always really important to add alt text to all of your images. So I'm just going to go and say that this is Bridgend College logo. Just a description of what the actual image is is perfectly fine. We'll leave a favicon for now. A favicon is basically this little icon here. So this is the sort of small icon that you see in the top bar of Chrome. We might come back and add one of those later on. Once I've done that, I can see that my logo has been added there. Now, I'm not going to go through exactly what all of these things do. Let's just pick a couple of them. Let's have a look at some collapsible text. So I'm just going to make some really quick um, examples in here. So text line one, um, text, oops. And text line two, and so on. Um, and you can see that that kind of drops down like you'd imagine text to do. And when we publish and preview this later, we'll see exactly what that does. Um, and it's a good idea to kind of publish and preview as you go along, but we'll talk about that just a little later. So for now, we've only got one page. So this is just a single page site when people come into our website this is all they see there's no navigation there's no way of moving to a different page there's no links it's just one single page so let's rectify that let's go and add a page so you can see this is my home page my home page is always my kind of landing page um, and then i can either duplicate this page or i can add a sub page or i can add a new page down the bottom so let's just add a new page and call it um let's just call it advanced google so if somebody has kind of come into this page, they see the intro first, and then we want them to go to the advanced page when they're done. Um, let's just click done there. So this then becomes our advanced Google Sites page. Now, if I want to link between these two pages, let's go back to my home page. Um, I can either use the navigation bar, like you'd see on a normal website. You can just click that one, and then we go to that page, or I can add a link or a button. So let's add a button, and I'm going to call that go to advanced page, and I can link it. And you see, if I click that link button, it automatically gives me the option to link to my new advanced Google Sites page. If I insert that, I can uh, drop the button down. Let's resize that back over there. Not sure what happened there, and I can center it in uh, in the in the center of the page, just there. So now we have kind of a what the, the the makings of what you might imagine a website to be. We have embedded videos, we have some text, we have a header image, we have an extra page, we have some um, funky kind of collapsible text, and we have a way of linking between the two pages. And it's always a good idea if we've got that um, in this page. Let's just copy it so I can press Control C there, uh, go over to my advanced Google Sites, and um, link back to the home page. So if we double click, uh, we can say, go to the home page. Um, and instead of linking to that page, we can link to home. OK, great. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is just how you customize the look of your site a little bit more than what we have done so far. So let's go back to the home page, and we'll kind of take a look at this. There's a few things you can do to make it uh, look a little different. Let's look at header type first. So we can change this header type to be four different versions. A banner is what we've currently got. So that's kind of just a that sort of size banner for our for our website. If we click title only, it get rid, gets rid of our image. This is a cleaner, um, kind of more basic look. Sometimes you might want this if you're kind of looking at a blog site. Uh, sometimes you want a little bit more of a graphic in the top. Large banner, exactly what it says in the tin. You're just bringing that banner a little bit bigger. And if you've got a cover image, then that actually covers the entire kind of front 
splash screen as you get into the website. And you'll often, um, you know, you'll see these sites where they'll have kind of a little arrow there which says scroll down, um, or maybe they'll play some uh, video in this in this site. Personally, I don't like these sites because it's not clear to me that I should scroll. And you've always got to imagine that you are the first, you, you're seeing this website for the first time. So as you come into this, what do I do here? Uh, the first thing I see is probably I'm going to go and click on advanced, but I don't want advanced. I actually want to scroll and there's no obvious way for me to scroll um, in this in this site. So I kind of like either a banner or a large banner because um, it's very obvious where all of the content is. The second way of customizing the kind of look and feel of your site a little bit further is through the use of themes. Now, Google have developed quite a few uh, sort of predefined themes which you can use to uh, customize your site. So if we go in and look at this theme, we can just change it. You can see the colors have changed. If we change the header type now, everything looks a bit different um, and we can even choose our color of the little the little bar again different theme different fonts uh, different kind of look different kind of feel so for my introduction to google sites i think i quite like aristotle and maybe with a with a sort of lighter blue feel to it um, i also quite like outlined buttons rather than filled in buttons so i can go ahead and and change that um, let's just have a look again at what happens if we say add a sub page. So if we add a sub page and I say this is um, changing the theme, then this just means that um, I'm going to kind of get a little drop down arrow here. And it's sort of a, a way of categorizing your pages together into one main header. So in the home page, which maybe it might be a good idea to not call it home, but actually called basic Google sites, this website, because uh, then I've got basic and advanced. And in basic Google sites, uh, I've got my changing the theme page. And you can see that's kind of come up there in the pages as an indented page. Now you can have an unlimited number of pages. Um, you can keep these kind of going. You can keep adding pages as much as you like, and you can add sub pages of sub pages and so on. You can also hide the pages from the navigation. So if you didn't want advanced Google sites to show up anymore, you just hide it from the navigation. And if you are kind of trying to play around with this on your own, I recommend just kind of going through and just checking what all of these um, individual little options do. The next thing I want to talk about and if we go back to the sort of home page, the basic Google Sites intro page, um, next thing I want to talk about is probably the most exciting, the most interesting, the most relevant part of this entire uh, little demo. And that is how you publish, preview, and share this site with others. There's not much point in making a website if you're not going to um, publish it and share it with, with the kind of wider world or with your friends or with whoever you want to see it. Now, the first thing to point out is this little toolbar uh, option at the top, and that is preview. So if we go and look at preview, this is exactly how our site will look after we publish it to the wider world. We can go through, we can click all the links, we can check everything works. Um, and we can also, even with, with Google Sites, check how it'll look on various different devices. And if you've ever done any web development before, this is the really neat bit. You don't have to worry about making your site responsive in any way. Google Sites automatically moves the header bar to, to the right, to the left hand side, automatically handles how the navigation looks, automatically trims everything down, puts the videos underneath each other and so on. You can preview on three devices. You can preview on a phone, on a kind of wider tablet, and of course on a larger screen. So you can play about with your layouts, you can play about with how your site looks, and you can at all times before you publish it, preview exactly what it looks like. And it's always a good plan to preview what it looks like before you put it live, because the worst thing in the world is coming across a website which has got lots of spelling mistakes or errors in it, uh, and you just don't want that. It's just, it just doesn't look very professional. Uh, to exit the preview, just click the X, and we're back into our editable Google site. 
The second thing to talk about is what happens if you want to collaborate with a different person on the same site before you publish it. So say you and your friend are working on the same site. Say I'm doing the basic Google Sites uh, introduction, but somebody else is doing the advanced Google Sites introduction. Um, then we c I can actually share this site directly with others. And I can click this little button in the top and let's have a look at what this does. So this is me. I'm the Google Sites user at the moment, uh, and if you've got your own Google site, uh, sorry, Google account, you will have your own name there. And I can go ahead and share it uh, with anyone I choose. So let's share it with my own sort of personal email address. And there's two things I can choose here. I can either choose for that person to become an editor or a published viewer. Now, if I want to make my Google site public publicly available on the web for anybody to find I don't necessarily need to add published viewers but say you're making a website just for your family to look at or some some of your friends or you're just for your local uh, rugby club to look at or your local football club or whoever it might be but they have to kind of log in and have authorization from you to look at it then the way to do that is to add these people to this sharing permission uh, box so if they're a published viewer, they can see the website, but it won't be publicly available on the web. We'll see kind of these situations in action in a second. So let's just make um, me, Scott Morgan, um, an editor. And if I send that, then smorgan at den01.co.uk will get an email and say, you've been invited to collaborate on a Google site. Uh, would you like to kind of accept? And they can click yes. So if we go back into the sharing panel, the first time you do this, you'll see these little dialog boxes. They are helpful. So just have a little read of them. And let's just go through and click on everything we can look, everything we can click on um, and sort of see what it does. So if I click that, then I can um, either turn this on and off. So this says editors can publish, change permissions and add new people. So that kind of gives them equal access um, as you on the on the site so any of your editors if that box is ticked they can have full permission over the site they can add people they can delete everything they can publish stuff uh, if you untick it obviously they can't do any of those three things quite self-explanatory there uh, in terms of what this links bit means let's just click change and have a little read the draft site um, so i can either make me uh, see it which is um, sometimes useful, or I can make anyone with a link see the draft site. That's probably not a good idea for most uses. Um, for most of the time, you kind of want to keep the draft site under lock and key just so that you uh, can see it. The published site, however, we can make that public. Uh, we can make the public site viewable for anyone on the internet to find and open. And if you've got a publicly available site, then why not uh, kind of do that? Again, like I said before, if you wanted to restrict access to a certain group of people, maybe just specific people within your sports club or within whatever you're making a website for, we just make that restricted. Nobody can see the site unless you specifically add them inside the share box here. So let's go ahead and change published site to public and let's just click done. The final piece of the puzzle is publish. So we've done, we've made our Google, we've made our tabs. Uh, obviously they're not complete in this demo, but you would have completed them. You would have kind of sent them to people that you know, that you trust and they've given you feedback and you've uh, worked out the feedback and now you want to publish it. This is it, the big blue button in the top right corner you're ready to go we click publish and we get a web address now if you look um, here we'll see it's got a prefix so it'll be visible at that website forward slash whatever I type here so I'm going to say intro to Google sites um, and it's forbidden or reserved words I think that's because I'm using Google uh, they don't like that it's against their branding policies so that is going to be my website 
Again, it tells you who can view your site and it's going to be anyone. And that's because of the sharing permissions we set just a moment ago. Um, if you're not part of an organization, so if you're just using a personal um, Google account, you won't get that bit there. Because I'm part of this organization, I get that bit. You'll see a different, uh, slightly different URL address there. Finally, we can click or not click that. We can click learn more if we're interested about that. Um, I don't mind the public search engines display in my site. Um, so let's um, publish that. It'll say publishing. Your site has been published successfully. And you'll notice we've got a view option down here. We've also got a new option in the top toolbar, which says copy published site link. If I click it, I get the option to copy the link. And then if I make a new tab and paste my uh, new link in there, I can go and visit my site. I can go and have a look around, do everything that I imagined that I could do. And it is fully published and available. Now, I just want to show you the difference between being signed into Chrome and being not signed into Chrome. If I open an incognito window, um, that means that everything gets signed out nothing is saved. I'm no longer signed into Google as this Google Sites user. I'm just a random person that's browsing the web. If I paste that in there, this is going to be a little game of spot the difference. I'll give you 20 seconds to spot the difference. Five seconds. It's this here. So when I'm signed in as me, I can edit the page. When I'm signed in as not me, obviously I can't edit the page. So don't be alarmed if you see the little pencil icon down in the bottom right, which says edit. That's not visible for everybody. That's just visible for you because you own the site. If you're just a random person uh, browsing, that's not there. I can't edit this at all from um, this page. If I click edit, I get automatically back to my uh, introduction to Google Sites uh, editable page. The next thing I wanted to talk about is handily pointed out to me by this new feature. So this is a new announcement banner and you can keep your visitors kind of informed of important news using this banner. So let's just get rid of show me and let's actually go and look through the settings menu, which is one of the only many uh, options we haven't looked through yet. Um, let's just click there. So there's a few things here and I'll just talk through them all really quick. Navigation, we can either have top or side navigation. If I change it to side, I get the three uh, hamburger icon in the top left otherwise i get that i quite like that so let's leave it at that change the colors and so on we've already done the logo um there's some viewer tools you're more than welcome to go and read through these um it sort of shows you the last updated time shows a contact form and so on analytics uh, you can actually connect a google analytics account i'm not going to cover this in much detail but if you want to learn more about that, you can click the Learn More link um, and go ahead and read about Google Analytics. It basically just allows you to see who's viewed the site, um, where they're from, and some deeper analytics about how they get to your site, how they find it, and so on. Good for kind of social marketing campaigns, social media marketing campaigns. It's good to kind of understand those um, ideas. Final thing, which is the thing that we're sort of here for is this announcement banner. So if you wanted to show um, an announcement temporarily, we can just click show banner and give it a message. And let's say check out the new advanced Google Sites pages. Um, and I'm just going to click the button label advanced Google Sites and then link to my advanced Google Sites. I don't want it to open in a new tab, and I don't want it to show on the advanced Google Sites page, so let's just put it as home page only. Um, that all should save. If I just exit that, I've got my new announcement banner. At any time, I can disable it, and it's gone. I can go back to settings and enable it again, and it's back. So this is kind of just a nice news flash, temporary uh, banner that you can kind of put at the top of your site and that's a brand new feature from 
Google Sites over the last couple of months. Let's turn it off. There's two more things I would like to just kind of go over before we sort of finish this uh, short demonstration, one of which will come under the advanced Google Sites topic, the first of which is this Add From Drive button. So if I just go down there and click Add From Drive, then what you can actually do here is if you've got a, uh, any files inside Google Drive, you can add them directly into your uh, Google Site and just as easy as click and insert. So that then automatically adds in my test uh, document, which is currently empty. But if I click there and open in a new tab, um, what you'll actually see is that if I update this live, it should automatically update the website. So once that um, sort of all changes are saved in Drive, like it says at the top there. Um, it should, when I go back to Google Sites and publish, that will um, go ahead and update my uh, site. Now, when we publish this time, we get a slightly different screen. And this shows us all of the differences. And this is really useful. And again, a brand new feature from Google. All of the differences that have happened since we last published. So this is my draft on the left. This is my currently published on the right. And I can go down and have a look exactly what I changed. And you can see this is present there, not present there. I'm happy with that change for now. So let's click publish and then um, view the site that we published. There we go. If I update this live, it should automatically update the site. Again, this is another update. Um, it may take a little bit of time, but if I refresh that page, it should come back with the other update. So again, this is a really nice way of um, putting up live updates into your site without having to go in and edit it. You can just edit the doc and it automatically updates your site uh, as well. We can just have a little look at the collapsible text so that we didn't do that earlier. That's what that does. That can be useful if you're trying to hide lots of information or links or something. Um, and you just want it to be um, collapsible. The final thing that I want to talk about in this little demonstration is this embed feature. And I'm actually just going to go and flick over onto advanced Google Sites for this, because this is probably as advanced as it gets when dealing with Google Sites. Hopefully, everything has been reasonably straightforward so far, and only to take a little bit of practice. So if I click Embed, I get presented with two options by URL or embed code. Now, this is a way of basically embedding anything from the internet into my website. And there's two ways of doing it. I'm going to demonstrate the embed code way. We'll probably have a look at the by URL way as well. Um, and we'll use the same uh, sort of method for both. Now, if you see what it says, it says paste the HTML code from the site you want to embed, and that goes there. Okay, so that's fairly straight, um, fairly self-explanatory as to what we need to do. But we just need to find some HTML code. What does that mean? Um, so let's just cancel that for a second. And I'm just going to go to YouTube. Now, I know we can embed YouTube videos from down here directly, like we saw in the in the first part. But I just want to demonstrate what this embed feature does using a YouTube video, because it's probably the easiest way to show you. You might come across these uh, some other things that can be embedded, um, and you might want to do that that way. But I'll just demonstrate it with a YouTube video, even though we can it, uh, insert them directly, as we did earlier. So let's just go open a new tab, and let's just go to YouTube. Dot com and let's find um, a video. Why not? Let's get the NASA live stream. Now, on any YouTube video, if I click share, I get various different options, one of which is embed. And this looks very much like this with the uh, sort of pointy arrows. Um, and I can click that and get some funky stuff. So, this um, and you usually see the keyword iframe. This is the code that you want to copy. You don't need to worry about what this code means. Um, it gives a width, a height, 
a source which is the uh, website URL you can check that against the URL in the top bar if you want to and then some other stuff that we don't really care about so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to take that across to Google Sites and click embed now I've got my code not my URL so let's paste that in there okay. and there we have it we have our embedded YouTube stream straight from the HTML code and we can click insert and there it is it's not as neat as it would be if we added it via YouTube um, because if you noticed when we added it directly via YouTube it actually resizes the video for us as we resize anything that's embedded via code actually has a fixed width and height so we can't resize it dynamically using Google Sites tools so that's why it's always better to add YouTube videos via the um, the kind of options on the right hand side. But this is just a demonstration. You might find some other um, sort of things that you might want to embed on your website that use um, HTML to embed. The URL version is almost exactly the same. Um, but instead of going through all the hassle of clicking share and so on, you can just copy the the web address in the top um, top bar and we can embed by URL and we can paste that there and we should get exactly the same um, idea it's recognized what that URL is and we can insert that this one does manage to work out how to resize so that's a little bit better in this situation than the embed HTML finally if you do know any HTML and you want to embed your own custom HTML and if you are interested in web um, web development at all I recommend that you kind of go and learn more about um, HTML and how it works you can actually just use the embed function to put whatever you want inside here so if I just put any kind of HTML code um, inside this box then this is going to make a paragraph called hello world it's going to line break and then it's going to make another paragraph and it's going to say goodbye world um, if I click next it's going to give me a little preview and I can insert that um, as would be expected so you can put any HTML code you like in here and this really you know kind of in increases the customization um, of Google Sites if you're handy with HTML and you kind of know what you're doing then you can really customize everything a lot using this feature so that's basically all I want to talk about. Let's just go through and publish once more. Um, so if I click publish, I can see my differences. It tells me what I've added um, and that's fine. I'm happy with that. Then it is published. Um, and then finally, let's just have a look at what happens in this these two um, boxes that we haven't looked at yet. One of them is more. Um, version history is quite interesting so if i click on version history i can actually see exactly all of the changes that have happened to this google site since we started and i can revert any of these changes at any time so at 9 16 pm this evening this page wasn't created then i created it this is what it looked like and if you remember we kind of went through this um and there we go i added um stuff I added the collapsible text I added the button and so on and I can restore that version if I want to get rid of all of my changes um, and that will then revert back to how it looked before so everything that I do is stored saved I don't need to worry if I delete a page by accident everything is recoverable and if you look my NASA videos have gone everything's back to kind of being all neat and I can click publish and go ahead again also in here you've got help and report the problem the tour we originally saw and the option to duplicate this site in its entirety if you want to finally uh, underneath the other blue drop down arrow next to publish you've got some published settings let's have a look at them we've already seen these um, 
our web address, the search settings, and whether or not we must review the changes before publishing. You can choose those based on your own circumstances. Um, review changes and publish, that's kind of what we do when we click publish anyway. Unpublish, so that's if you want to take your site down um, offline and view publish site. Um, let's just go ahead and publish and there's no changes to review so we are done um, on that Google site. Finally let's just go and have a look at what it looks like. We'll copy the link um, and we'll put it into a web browser and there is our Google site. Everything should be there as we expect um, and so on. So thank you very much for listening to that introduction. I hope you find it useful. If you do have any questions, um, feel free to get in touch with me. My email address will be on the final slide. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you again for listening.